All right, so I'm really uh, happy to be here this morning. Uh, this is a, a wonderful conference. It's very exciting to, uh, to be with everyone in uh, San Francisco. This is the third conference we've done in San Francisco, and it's the, uh, the fourth year that we've had uh, a, an annual conference uh, as a jQuery. Um, so I'm the executive director of the jQuery Foundation. As Adam mentioned, we, this is a nonprofit organization that we set up at the beginning of this year, and so I'm going to be talking about why we did that, how we did that, and what we're doing with it, and how we hope that you can uh, participate in that. So first, I wanted to just take a minute and imagine a world in which jQuery didn't exist. Some of you can think back to a time when this was the case. You might have been a web developer in 2004 or 2005, and you remember the days of copying and pasting bits of JavaScript or having multiple branches of code for different browsers. And it's, it's hard to imagine today such a world because jQuery has been around for a long time and it's become a, a staple of uh, the web development tool set and really a foundation of uh, web development. So I wanted to just go back and take a look at how we got to that point, right? jQuery had really humble beginnings. Uh, John Resig presented jQuery at Bar Camp New York City on January 14th, 2006. And I, I was talking to him yesterday about this, and, and he said, you know, I gave three presentations at that meetup. And one of them was jQuery, and the other two were other projects that I was working on at the time. And I have a feeling that he might not have known uh, whether any of these three projects that he presented would take off. Um, he, he did the three presentations because they were three different things he was working on at the time. And he, he actually kind of, you know, admitted to me yesterday, I, I was okay with me sharing this, but like, he said the audience was just like, eh. He presented jQuery five years ago, and the audience was like, eh. So, I mean, it took a, like a week or three days or something for it to make it to Dig and a couple of other websites, and then it just kind of exploded. And, and ever since then, it's continued to grow. But at that very beginning, that humble beginning, uh, John Resig, created something amazing, and it just, it started with this idea, this could be easier, this could be better, and here's how, and he presented that, and he got it to catch on. And I just, I wanna take an, uh, just an opportunity to thank John for that contribution, not only to web development, but to the internet, and to all of us as web developers, so please join me in um, thanking John. I, I was interviewed recently because John was nominated for an award for a technical publication as one of the top innovators in the last 10 years. Uh, and I shared with him just the impact that jQuery has had, and not to you know, put too much of a spotlight on John because he, he really doesn't seek that out, but what I shared with them is jQuery is on more than 58% of the top 10,000 websites today. And if you look at the top 50 JavaScript technologies, and this is, you can do this on builtwith.com slash JavaScript, of the top 50 JavaScript technologies, 25 of them are based on jQuery. That's an incredible achievement. And that's something, again, for the credit that's due to John, it's more than John because he shared it with the world and he invited other people to participate. John created a community and he created a culture around this library, and he obviously is not the first, time, first person to do this with an open source project, but he created something very unique, and it took off for a number of reasons. Part of that is because he did more than create code. He created a culture, and he created a community, and that's what we're part of today, and that's what we're continuing. So it's interesting to look back at that, just that evolution of how did we get from Bar Camp New York City, where the audience was like, eh, to today, some would say, as, as Yehuda said last year at one of our conferences, jQuery is the standard library of the web. Now, the first few years, John Resick's PayPal account was how this project was run. And it's, it's really interesting to look. We had three conferences. The first, per, the first conference had 75 attendees. The second conference had 150 attendees. The third conference, we had uh, two or 300 attendees. All three of these conferences were run out of John Resick's PayPal account. Literally, there was a donate page on jQuery.com for two and a half years, and if anyone clicked on it and said, I want to give money to jQuery, it went to John. That was the level of trust that the world, the internet, the web development community placed in him 
because he did something great and he asked people to join him. And that's fantastic. That obviously couldn't stick around you know, as the, the pattern or the model. And John was, got to a point where he's like, um, maybe we should create something other than just my PayPal account that's in my name. So we joined the Software Freedom Conservancy in um, September of 2009. I'll have to correct the dates here. It's September 2009 through February 2012. Software Freedom Conservancy is a nonprofit that shepherds open source projects and takes care of the financial and legal parts of running an, an organization like ours. And that allows us to just focus on the code. And we did this for a couple years. We just focus on writing jQuery, putting on a conference, writing documentation, growing some of the other projects. During this time period, we were able to put together a contributor license agreement. We uh, registered the jQuery trademark. We funded the development of the jQuery UI and jQuery mobile projects. And we eventually became the largest member project of the Software Freedom Conservancy. By some estimates or by some metrics, we outsized all of the other member projects of the Software, Software Freedom Conservancy combined. And they were extremely supportive of our growth and evolution. In fact, it is the design of the Software Freedom Conservancy to get an open source project to a point where they can stand on their own. And so that's the point at which we got to at the, near the end of last year. We said, we're ready to move on and exist on our own. And so we created, at the beginning of this year, in February 2012, we created the uh, jQuery Foundation. This is also a nonprofit like the Software Freedom Conservancy. It's a little different kind, so if you'll bear with me a couple minutes, I'm gonna share with you just a, a tiny bit of IRS nonprofit tax law, a very tiny bit. So the, so the jQuery Foundation is a 501c6 nonprofit. Now you might be familiar with 501c3s, they're somewhat more common. They're what's called a charitable uh, nonprofit. They might be educational, could be a museum, it could be someone, an uh, organization trying to help people in need. They benefit, a 501c3 benefits the public good. A 501c6 nonprofit is created as what's called a trade association. So an example you might be familiar with is the NFL. The National Football League? The National Football League is a nonprofit. The Jets are awesome. <laughs> the Woo. National Football League is a 501c6 nonprofit trade association. I kid you not, you can look on Wikipedia. It's not the NBA, right? It's not any other professional league of sports teams, but for some reason, the NFL is a nonprofit. Now, this seems kind of crazy because you think, there's a lot of money in the NFL. Uh, I, I have a feeling with all the teams, all the events, the ticket prices alone, right, they broadcast these games. The NFL exists as an organization that wants to improve cooperation and competition between sports teams. It makes sense. And that's how it reads in the law as, as far as them being granted this nonprofit status. They're a trade association, and they want to improve the sport of football and improve the environment that allows that sport to, you know, be, uh, to thrive. So we are similar to that, except we aren't playing sports, right? But we are a trade association. Uh, that it's a specific kind of nonprofit. And again, it's not benefiting the public good as much as it might benefit the internet at large for the jQuery to exist. The benefit that the IRS recognizes in the, jQuery, in the jQuery Foundation is that we connect businesses and individuals that share a common business interest. So everyone in this room and all of the sponsors of this event recognize value in jQuery, or you wouldn't be here, right? Either you were anxious to this conference, to come to this conference, or your employer was anxious for you to come to this conference because of the value that it provides to know jQuery, to use jQuery, and benefits see the same value. Some of the com uh, companies see the same value. Some of the companies see that in contributing to jQuery, in using jQuery, in recruiting talented JavaScript, jQuery web developers. And so this is the goal, really, of the jQuery Foundation, is to connect these groups together. And to do that in a way that supports the mission. So the mission of the jQuery Foundation is threefold. Number one, support the development of jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery Mobile, QUnit, and Sizzle. We could expand this in the future, but 
as of today, these are the five projects that we work on, and you heard a lot about these projects yesterday. This is the core. This is our program. This is the code we write. Uh, there are other associated parts to the, the mission. So the second one is develop documentation and support resources for all the jQuery projects. So those same projects we saw on the previous slide, jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery Mobile, QUnit, and Sizzle, we want to make sure that they're easy to use, easy to learn, easy to understand. We don't provide training, as an example. We, uh, there are many companies that provide training, but we work with companies that provide training. For example, Boku uh, offered the, the jQuery training that was right before this conference, and they, they and other companies such as Append2 and Jupyter IT have done the same at other events, and we'll do so in the future. So the jQuery Foundation is not, despite our part of our mission being to support and document, we're not going to suddenly enter into competition with training companies. But we do want to make sure that our documentation is stellar. And it, it has been one of the best documented uh, projects in, a, in the open source space. Now, the third part of our mission is we want to foster and grow the jQuery community. And events are one of the ways in which we do that. We also have uh, online, we have a lot of different ways that people can contribute to the project. They can get help. They can form local meetups. They can contribute on the forum, answer questions. And we, we, we've seen this community grow, and we want to continue to, to, we want it to continue to grow. And we also want our team to grow, right? Our team today is about 50 people. And um, you know, last night, we had an awesome hackathon. We had about 75 people stick around for four hours. And I recognized, by, by the end of the night, I had a number of team leads come up to me and indicate an, some people that would be really great potential con contributors to some of the jQuery projects that we've got going on. So this is part of it too. Right? Some of it is conferences, but it's going to be other events also, not always just a conference, but we'll have lots of events that people can participate in the project. So we're, we've created a membership program for the jQuery Foundation, and the membership program is both for companies and individuals. So companies can join the jQuery Foundation, and they can find benefit and value in that. Individuals can join the jQuery Foundation, and they get a different set of benefits. So for companies, they might be seeking out website recognition. Maybe they want to be recognized for the contribution they make to jQuery by us thanking them uh, publicly by saying, you know, this company supports jQuery, and we put the, their logo on our website. The, the companies, a lot of companies find value in this because about 7 million web and mobile developers visit our website every month about 30 million times. So that's a lot of the leading web developers visiting jQuery.com, jQueryUI.com, jQueryMobile.com, jQuery.org. We have about 30 websites. We worked on um, 10 or 15 of them last night during the hackathon, which was really fantastic. We're preparing a full redesign and a full relaunch of all of our website properties. And, and this will be part of that, to recognize these companies that have decided to join the jQuery Foundation. Another benefit that companies seek in joining the jQuery Foundation is conference benefits. So they get discounted conference sponsorship packages. They might get a, a booth uh, at a discount to, to present at the conference. They also get recognized on special signage at the conference. So you've, you've seen banners during this conference for the conference sponsors. There's also some banners that are recognizing the members of the jQuery Foundation. At all our events throughout the year, we're going to recognize those members that join by paying annual dues uh, in support of our mission. And finally, a member of the jQuery Foundation at the silver level or higher can host a jQuery event. Uh, we had our first international conference in February of this year in the UK hosted by a company called White October. And what we'd like to do is take the same model that we used for them to host that event, and that is they put on the event entirely, but it was a jQuery conference. It was called jQuery Conference UK. And then they shared some of the revenue with the jQuery project so that we could fulfill our mission. And so we've, we've invited companies and will continue to invite companies to join the jQuery Foundation if they'd like to host an event in their city or in their country. And I'm going to be talking a little bit later about some of the events that we've got planned in the coming year. So if, if you are a company or if you have a company that might be interested in joining the jQuery Foundation, if you want to know more about the program, send me an email at membership at jQuery.org. Or if you think your boss might be interested, let them know. So the companies that have joined so far, we, we've been talking to companies in the last few months. Uh, I want to recognize at the gold level, BlackBerry, uh, RIM, the creators of BlackBerry, Adobe, Intel, and Apogee. So these are, this is the highest level that um, companies have joined so far. And you can see on the member signage these, at the conference, these members are 
uh, attributed there, as well as the other levels, the silver and bronze levels. I want to um, make a special mention of an, a program that Apogee is announcing at this conference called the Apogee Accelerator Fund. So they're providing $10,000 for startup projects that make use of their um, uh, usergrid.com, either the hosted service or the open source version. They won't take ownership of the code you write. They, you can use the money however you want. And they want feedback, right? They want to improve their, their product. So they, the only thing they ask is that you have fun and that you ship something. Now, they've made a unique uh, commitment to the jQuery project, and that is that for jQuery and jQuery mobile, they're booking one spot in this fund, that's $10,000, toward a project that uses jQuery, and another $10,000 spot for a project that uses jQuery mobile. So these are the only technologies that have pre-reserved slots in this fund. So if you want to know more, go to apogee.com slash jQuery. And um, again, thanks Apogee and all the other Gold Level members. So as I mentioned, we do have uh, quite a number of events planned in the coming uh, year, in the next 12 months. We've got eight events planned, eight conferences. Six of them will be international. And I'm pleased to announce this morning that we already have the dates, the cities, and the host companies for the next three events. So the next conference that we know about so far is going to be uh, called jQuery TO, jQuery Toronto. This will be, uh, and there's, the website is already live. You can sign up if you'd like to speak there, or if you'd like to attend, or if you'd like to volunteer. February 2013 in Toronto, Canada, and this is hosted by B Notions, a member, a silver member of the jQuery Foundation. jQuery Europe, same month, a little bit later in the month, February 22nd through 23rd. Vienna, Austria, this is hosted by Gentix another silver level member in the jQuery Foundation, and finally, jQuery UK, London, England, uh, April 19th, 2013. This is hosted by the same company as hosted our UK conference this year, White October. So um, this, these are, the uh, again, the benefits that uh, are available to companies that join the jQuery Foundation. Now, I'm going to actually ask that the house lights be brought up for a minute, and I'm going to unplug the projector, and I've invited a couple of uh, team members Adam and Leah to help me talk about the benefits that are available to individuals that decide to join the jQuery Foundation. So can we bring up the lights? So we have three levels of individual jQuery Foundation members and we basically at the first level it's called a fan. If you're a fan of jQuery then you can join for $10 a month or $100 per year and you get a jQuery t-shirt. Go ahead and walk across the stage. We don't actually have anything to say. <laughs> so, so one of the, the thank you gifts that we want to provide to individuals that join the jQuery Foundation is the classic jQuery t-shirt. Very stylish. Some other benefits that individuals of the jQuery Foundation receive are discounts from companies that have joined the jQuery Foundation. For example, you could get discounts on books, on trainings, on software products. So companies that join the jQuery Foundation are able to offer discounts to individual members. You'll also get a pack of jQuery uh, Foundation logo stickers and buttons. And there will be, at each of the jQuery uh, events that we run throughout the year, there will be special member-only uh, activities, such as an after party or a, a happy hour. OK, so that's the friend level. Again, $10 a month. Or if you pay annual dues, $100 per year. So the next level is called, sorry, that's the fan level. You're a fan of jQuery. If you're a friend of jQuery, that's a little bit bigger commitment, and so that's $20 a month or $200 a year, and so we want to give you a little bit more thanks. So we've created the jQuery hoodie. <laughs> Classic jQuery logo on a sleek, thin hoodie. This is made by Alternative Apparel. And you will be styling, again, a friend, a friend of the jQuery Foundation. $20 per month or $200 per year. And the other same benefits apply. So members, uh, uh, invites to special members only parties, the stickers and the buttons, and the discounts from any companies that join the foundation. All right, we've got one more exciting level. So they're gonna put on one more piece of apparel. Now, we, we really wanted everyone to be able to tote their things in style. So we created the jQuery bag. This is from a company called Timbuktu. And if you wanna see one of these bags, every speaker at the conference today has one. 
Uh, there are two sizes. The speaker bags that you might find, if you run into a speaker, there's size medium. That's the one that Adam is holding. Uh, and then Leia has the small size. The small size is for really good for like a 15 to 17 inch laptop, or sorry, 13 to 15 inch laptop. And the large size, medium size is great for up to a 17 inch laptop. <laughs> the, uh, this is called the hero level. So same benefits apply, and this is $40 per month or $400 per year. So this membership, individual membership program will be launching in the uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, we made some really good progress last night. One of the teams was working on the PayPal integration. We're going to use PayPal subscriptions for people to join the, the jQuery Foundation and make a donation um, to support our mission. So thank you to Adam and Leah. So you, you may be sitting here and thinking, $100 for a t-shirt? Really? So uh, this is where I go back to my short lesson on nonprofits. We are not selling a product. Right? And, and I don't just say that because jQuery is a free and open source library. Right? We are trying to accomplish our mission, which is to continue to develop jQuery in all related projects and support it. And so we're inviting you to donate to that cause. And if you donate to that cause, we'd like to thank you with a gift. So you're not buying a t-shirt for $100. You're making a $100 donation to the jQuery Foundation, and you're getting a thank you gift. Uh, and um, we really hope you enjoy it. We hope you find value in it. If there are other things you would find valuable, let us know. Now, I, I want to mention these are annual dues. So next year comes around. Um, they'll renew automatically unless you cancel, and we hope you don't uh, see a reason to cancel. But every year, there's a new set of gifts at the same reasonable levels. So. We won't always do a t-shirt and a hoodie and a bag. Next year, we're going to find different gifts that will entice people to continue as members. Um, now, some people will say, you know, I really want a jQuery t-shirt, and I, I just can't afford to join the jQuery Foundation. You know, there's, the only way to get a jQuery t-shirt is for me to pay $100, and that's, that's a little bit steep. Um, we don't, as a nonprofit, we really don't want to get in the business of selling a product. And so what we've done is partnered with DevSwag. Uh, Leah Silber uh, created this company, and she actually has a booth here at the conference. If you haven't seen them yet, check it out. It's just down the hall here. And so DevSwag is able to sell, uh, licensing the trademark from jQuery, now that we've registered that trademark, DevSwag is able to sell jQuery t-shirts and jQuery UI t-shirts as of today, as well as stickers. So if you're just looking for a t-shirt at a t-shirt price, then that's the place to buy it, devswag.com. So next, I've invited uh, Corey Frang to come up and give a few words about the, all the work that we're doing on changing our, our infrastructure, our websites and web servers, and uh, the exciting uh, things that are happening in terms of utilizing GitHub and WordPress and, and improving our collaboration, our uh, workflow, so we can have people contribute to our project in more ways than just writing JavaScript. Thanks, Richard. So he pretty much just hit all of the summary points that I was going to talk about. Um, so we've been working on switching over. We're currently using something like 27 servers to host all of our websites. And we've been working on consolidating all of these things and trying to get it down to just five. Seems like a crazy target, but nowadays technology has gotten a lot better. We have awesome applications that are open source like Nginx, FPM for PHP, Node, so many things that we can do nowadays to optimize all of these web things that we're working on. And also GitHub makes it really easy for us to collect all of this information that we uh, are putting on all of our websites. How many websites was it? 30, 30 websites? Man, that's a lot of websites. Uh, <laughs> Why don't we consolidate some of those? Um, so it's, it's been a lot of work. Uh, we've had a lot of help. Uh, the guys from Automatic were helping a lot yesterday. And uh, the people who showed up last night for our hackathon definitely got a good look at what's coming. And hopefully, you all will be seeing it very soon. So I don't know that I really have that much more to cover. So I'm going to pass it back to Richard here and let him continue on. Thanks, Corey. So yeah, we're, we're definitely very excited. Some of you were at the hackathon last night, and you got a, a peek at uh, this, this new notion that we've, we've come to, which is we really want the contribution to the jQuery project to be consistent across all the different disciplines. Right? If you're contributing to jQuery, it should be consistent with a contribution that you make to jQuery UI. If 
you're contributing to jQuery UI, it should be consistent with that of jQuery mobile. So we're doing a lot of work to make sure that our teams use the same tool set. We're all switching to Grunt as our build tool. We all use GitHub, whereas before we were on SVN, and we, we made the switch to GitHub at different times, but now we're all there. Now, we've spent the last couple of years really focused on the code projects because that's kind of our day to day. We're writing code, we're fixing bugs, we're adding features, we're doing releases. And you heard a lot about the, the success of those projects and the future, the roadmap of those projects. The focus now is not shifting away from those, but we also want to make sure that all the other aspects of what we do, these other two parts of our mission, that people can contribute in the same kind of way. So if you can't necessarily fix a bug in jQuery, but you want to help, then it should be the same process to contribute. Maybe you see something on jQuery.org that you think could be improved. Maybe a paragraph could be uh, worded better. Right? In the past, it was really kind of tricky to know how to make that contribution, or if you could, or who to talk to, because it's a website. And so you have to find someone on the team and ask them, hey, how do I fix that? And they say, well, you have to get to that server, and it might be a different server than this other server. So it's kind of, it was you know, just different for every single website. Now, as, as we, we've talked about, it's quite a number of websites. And because they were all added at different points in the last six years, they all had a different workflow and a different configuration. So what we've done is we've switched all of our website content over to GitHub. So there's a repository at, at github.com slash jQuery for every single one of our websites. And it's just the name of the repository is the name of the website. So if you see a bug on, and this will be the case once we, once we finish this, uh, this launch. So it's not the case today, but in the next couple weeks when we launch the redesign of the websites, if you see a typo or something that can be improved on jQuery.com, on jQuery.org, if you want to improve the responsive design of you know, our websites, you can clone one of those GitHub repositories, make the change, preview it locally, and then submit a pull request. So that contribution, again, whether it's writing code or helping with the websites, it's consistent. And that's really exciting for us. And we, we want to take whatever steps we can to make the same true for our running of events, our coordination of other infrastructure tasks, like Corey mentioned, keeping web servers up and running, and so forth. So I want to give a special thanks to the uh, around 75 people that we had stick around for four hours last night for the hack, uh, hack night between 6 and 10. And again, thanks to Share3 for, uh, for sponsoring that. So we had, we had, again, about 75 people. We had teams of three to five people. There was a team lead for each team. And for everyone that stuck around until about 9.45 or 9.50, uh, you should have received information about sending your email address to membership at jQuery.org. If you haven't done that, if you were there the full four hours and you haven't done that, just shoot your name and email address to membership at jQuery.org. What we announced late last night as people were leaving is that every participant in the hack night last night gets a free one-year membership in the jQuery Foundation. Uh, they're, basically, they paid their dues last night by donating four hours of their time to help in our web website redesign project. So thanks very much. So I'm going to open the remaining time for questions. We've got about eight minutes. Questions? You, do, you don't want any lights, do you, Adam? Oh, no. OK. Anybody? Oh, there's one here. Can you guarantee that that hoodie will look as good on me as it did on Adam? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey, where's John? Where's John? John's right there. Hey, John. <laughs> How you doing? Are uh, jQuery Foundation donations uh, tax deductible or no? So you'll have to ask a tax advisor for tax advice. That's the, the technical answer to that question. Um, my understanding, and I'm not, a, I'm not a tax accountant or a tax attorney, um, my understanding is that generally donations to a 501c3 charitable nonprofit are tax deductible. Again, it depends on the individual situation. And a, a donation by an individual that, that you would normally exempt, uh, donations to a 501c6 nonprofit are not tax deductible. Again, I, I did not just provide you with any tax advice. Um, 
Yeah, we're, we're working on a CLA and a CYA up here. Uh, <laughs> I have a question. Why, why didn't we do a 501c3? Isn't, isn't like jQuery essentially synonymous with the public good writ large? That's a really good question, Adam. <laughs> we always thought we'd be a 501c3. Uh, why not? It's a nonprofit, right? It's charitable, and it, it is absolutely to the benefit of the public good for jQuery to exist. There's an interesting, seemingly, a development in the last two or three years in that no open source project that has requested 501c3 status in the last, I don't know, two and a half, three years ha uh, has had it granted. There are open source projects that have been operating for more than two years as for-profit entities hoping and waiting and wishing that that status would be granted to them. Uh, that was a risk that we could have taken on, right? We could have said, well, we're going to request the 501c3 status and be a charitable nonprofit, and then individuals can uh, potentially deduct the, the donations they make. Um, and so when we weighed that risk, we said, well, we could, two, three years from now, we could not have that status. And if we were being advised by a tax accountant, he would say, until you get the status granted, you need to hold aside all that money to pay those taxes in case they ever come due. And uh, we didn't feel it was worth the risk. And the other thing is, a 501c6, uh, despite that lack of uh, tax deductible donation benefit, uh, it really seemed to fit our, our mission of connecting these individuals and companies in that we, we want people to join in what we're doing. Uh, and it's, it's a more... I don't know of anyone, any 501c3 that has members that pay dues. That's really the kind of structure that a 501c6 is. So we could have decided to do it differently. And, and as a 501c3, we could have simply said, make donations. Right? That's what we did for the first three years. And people did. People made donations. They attended conferences. We raised money. Um, but this is just a different mechanism of doing that. Anybody else? Uh, so the question I have is the money that people are paying for their memberships, um, can you just give us a quick overview of where that goes? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't have at this time uh, like a, an exact number, right? How much goes to this, how much goes to that. Uh, this is something that we're working on because we're still very early on. You know, we've been in existence for about three months. In that time, we've been able to raise money by companies joining the foundation. Last night, we added 75 individuals to the foundation. Um, and so we're going to sit down uh, in, the, in the next weeks and months and, and figure out the, you know, what's our budget for the next quarter, what's our budget for the next year. Uh, but just to give you an idea generally of the kinds of things that it goes towards, um, our program budget is, getting back to our mission, is jQuery and related projects. Right? That's one of those three parts of our mission. So ensuring that that work happens is really why this organization exists and why we have and need the resources that, that we see. So it, ensuring that development on jQuery and jQuery core, uh, jQuery UI and jQuery mobile and other projects like QNIS, Sizzle, ensuring that development happens is kind of different for every project. In some cases, like jQuery, I was talking to Dave Methvin and I said, Dave, what does your team need? He said, we need to get together six times a year in person for a couple days. That may change at some point in the future. Maybe they need a part-time employee that leads the development or the peer review or a pull request or whatever it is. Uh, or maybe they need a full-time employee. As of now, the jQuery core team, and this de you know, depends on every single individual circumstance, maybe they have an employer that allows them to donate a lot of time. Uh, jQuery core's plan is to use the resources that they have available to get together in person. Uh, the jQuery UI and, and mobile projects might, uh, certainly will do a lot of the same. Sometimes there's contracted work to ensure that people have dedicated time available. Uh, on a part-time and eventually maybe full-time basis. Currently, we only have part-time contractors doing development work. And uh, so that should make up a really significant part of the budget. I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know the exact number, but you know, I would guess anywhere from 40 to 70%. Then the remaining part of the budget, we're gonna operate the, the organization. So we have legal and uh, attorney fees. And then we have the other parts of the, the mission that we, we put on, such as events, keeping the servers up and running, uh, doing documentation, writing website content, all of the things that aren't related to writing JavaScript and fixing bugs in JavaScript. Any other questions? We've got one minute left.
right. One, oh. there's one, one was that I, uh, yeah, there's one in the back. Oh. You just want to see Adam run? Is that what I heard? Does the um, foundation follow a traditional nonprofit uh, governance structure? And if so, what's the, uh, how is uh, like voting on board going to happen? That's a great question. So we actually developed the uh, governance structure that we have today while we were part of the Software Freedom Conservancy. The Software Freedom Conservancy provides freedom to any open source project that joins to determine its own governance structure. The only thing that they ask is that a single representative be appointed to communicate the will of that project. So it could be a benevolent dictator, right? And they, they could just say, here's what we want, and here's, here's what we want to spend that money on. When we existed as a jQuery project within the Software Freedom Conservancy, uh, anywhere between 15 and 20 people, uh, 20 of us during that time, uh, we developed a set of bylaws, a set of governance rules that determines how we exist as a board of directors, how we make decisions. So all the decisions that we make are majority, uh, they're you know, we make consensus decisions and then we vote until we reach a majority, sometimes a two-thirds majority, depending on how big the, the decision is. And all those votes happen in public. Uh, those are, you can find links to that on uh, jQuery.org. There's a public Google, Google Groups mailing list that you can view the last three years of decisions that we've made, even before we existed as a foundation. So that will continue. Um, and it, it's changing a little bit now because we're a foundation. We have actually officers now, so I'm the executive director. Uh, Dave Methvin is the president of the board of directors. Yehuda Katz is the treasurer. Uh, Scott Gonzalez is the secretary. And then we've got two committee chairs. Dan Heberden is the technology committee chair. And Leah Silver is the chair of the community and events um, committee. So these, the, the six people I just mentioned form the executive committee. We run the day-to-day -day operations. We meet weekly for about an hour. And uh, then the board, uh, which we're all members of as well, um, has oversight over that committee. Um, and, and basically the board meets quarterly unless otherwise needed, quarterly in person, to provide that strategic, high level strategic direction and um, just make sure, making sure that the executive committee is on track with our mission. All right, thanks everyone for your time.